take you guys all out somewhere. But um, <laughs> all right, you, so maybe you're hoping that maybe you're hoping that he doesn't show up. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, the grading, which is which is probably an, another interesting point, is we have uh, six problem sets uh, in. I, b I believe it's six problem sets, one final exam, and we're going to grade you based mostly on the problem sets and 25% on the exam. Uh, so let me start jumping into to this. Um, the first thing you kind of need to deal with with regard to uh, uh, probability is uh, having a language. And this is for, for describing, uh, describing events, or at least a language for describing how you uh, model an experiment. And what we're going to go through a little bit at the start is, you know, this notion of the algebra of events. And I think you guys have seen stuff like this, but, and, and this may be a review, but I'd like to, to spend the day uh, talking about that. So uh, one of the things is that uh, when you model a, a system, you know, you, there's a lot of different types of experimental outcomes. And the point is, is that in the algebra of events, an event is simply a point in a space where the space is defined by all the possible um, events. So an example of that might be, you know, when I flip a coin uh, that has a head and tail, like a like a penny, um, the experimental space might consist of the event that it's a head or the event that it's a tail, um, and that and it's a two point space. Um, another example might be, well, you know, I'm playing roulette, and you know there are, uh, there's I don't know I can't remember how many there's like thirty or so, what is it thirty thirty eight. So there's 38, 38 spots, discrete spots, and you have a 1 in 38 chance of, you know, the, the points are the 38 numbers, and depending upon how these things are spaced, you have a 1 in 38 chance of getting a particular, a particular number. Um, and another example might be, which isn't discrete, is having uh, a spinner between 0 and 1, like on a clock, uh, or like, like having a clock, what's the, the points are any particular point between zero and one, you know, there, th and each point is equally likely. Um, so, uh, when, when we start talking about a set that is kind of important of all the events in a, in, in, a, in an event space, um, we talk about that and we call it the universal set. And usually, you den denote that U. Um, the the uh, the complement of a set of events. So, I can say that. Uh, a set of events is, you know, a bunch of point, points in the space. The complement of that is all the other points in the space. Um, and there's there's a set that we call the the null set that basically contains no points. Its complement, of course, is the universal set. Um, and then we can move on to the next thing, which you're familiar with, which is simply the intersection of two sets of events: an event set A and an event set B. If uh, two, two, uh, if, the, if the set of events are intersecting, then um, we denote that A B. So it might be if I, if um, uh, if I had a set of events like uh, tossing the heads, uh, to tossing to tossing a coin twice, um, and I say, oh, the events, one set of events are the events that um, that it contains heads, and the other one is the uh, the set of events, which you know, event set B is the event set where um, the set, the, sorry, the events contain um, tails. Um, then the intersection of those events would be uh, something that had a head and tail, or a tail and head. Um, and then we, let's move on to uh, the union of the set of events. Um, well, uh, the union of the set of events is to take all the events in both sets and combine them, and we denote that A plus B. And I think there's some, you know, other interesting notions like uh, the set of events, um, you know, two sets of events in U are equal if um, every point in A is also in B and every point of U not in, sorry, not in A prime is also in, in B prime. Rather, I, mean, I guess, I guess the point is, is that if every point in one set is in the other is in the other set and vice versa, then then the two sets are equal. Um, and Here's here's sort of the you know base, basically if you take these seven axioms um, of the algebra of events um, and you can we can go through each of them and they're the it's fairly you know they're the fairly standard set which is that you know there's the commutative law that the uh, I guess I guess the union of A and B is equal to the union of B and A 
and the union, and then there's this, the associative law that you know basically tells you that however you take the union of these things, it doesn't really matter, uh, you know, what order you do it in. Uh, and then there's the distributive law that allows you to distribute, um, to distribute. And then there's some some more. That one of the ones that's kind of interesting is the De Morgan's law. Have you guys seen? You've seen De Morgan's law? Okay, so that's so that's one that that you know applies there too. And I think on the problem set, you'll see a lot of application of that in proving some of these. The, some of the relations that, that you use. And then um, two fairly straightforward ones are that the intersection of uh, so, you know, a, a, an event A and its complement is the null set, and the intersection of, of uh, the of set of events A and the uh, universal set is it, the set itself A. Um, and I guess, I guess there's some interesting derivable relations that you can get out of this. That, you know, one of them is that uh, if you take the union of the set of events with itself, you get the same set of events. Uh, if you take the set of the union, sorry, if you take a set of events and like A and a subset of its events, you still get the same set of events. Um, and I'm just going through these in words so that you kind of get a sense of what you know. It's 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 a lot of symbols, but it's easier to sometimes think about it that way. Another another example might be uh, 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 you know. Uh, you could simply write like this: a, a plus a prime b equals a plus b. Uh, that that's you know if you rewrite that you know you can rewrite that as um, a plus a b plus a prime b, and that gets you to a plus b. Um, uh, I guess using the, you know the distributive law that you know you can you can. The set of the sets. Sorry, you, you can you, you can go through and prove prove all these things. I think it's fairly obvious how to how, how to do that. The, the s second two are, are kind of interesting to use, and we'll, in the tutorials, I'm going to ask you to actually uh, use those uh, or prove some of these things. And uh, let's, I guess we can go down to um, a kind of uh, another set part of the language is uh, the notion of a mutually exclusive set of events. And a set of collectively exhaustive set of events, and a set of mutually exclusive events are um, basically if the set of events don't intersect. You know, if you have a bunch of a set of a bunch of sets of events, if those sets of events don't intersect, then they're mutually exclusive. So in this diagram, for example, the sets A and B are uh, you know mutually ex exclusive of each other, um, but the the set U and any particular set. Um, like an a, like a or b uh, is are not mutually exclusive. So a is not mutually exclusive of the universal set. Um, then we move on to um, being collectively exhaustive. And the point of being collectively exhaustive is if I take the um, union of all the sets of events that 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 you've uh, described, am I able to come up with the universal set? Um, if the answer is yes, then you know you've got a collectively exhaustive set. And the reason why this is interesting and is is that is if you combine the two terms, you end up getting something what we call uh, you know the events of the sample space, and this is the tool that you'll use sort of to uh, deal with all sorts of probabilistic problems. What you need to do, or at least the, the the meaning of the definition is to be the finest grain, mutually exclusive, collectively exhaustive listing of all possible outcomes of a model of an experiment. So whenever you look at a problem and you say what you know what are the possible outcomes. You need to sort of think about, you know, one one approach is to think about the sample space, where you'll spend your time looking at, at the problem, and think about, well, what are all the possible outcomes, and how do I list them in a mutually exclusive way? Um, and so, one example of a sequential sample space, um, going back to that example of heads and tails, um, is, uh, you know, here's, is is here we're tossing a coin twice, and I want to know what the two possible outcomes are, and you know, one one example would be both heads, heads and tail, uh, tails and heads, and heads and tails. Uh, I, I know that's boring and it's 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 an enumerative, but it's um, if if you can ascribe the probability to each of these things, which we'll talk about in a, in a second, um, you can then decide what the probabilities are that um, that are related to the set of events. And one of the things that that uh, you might describe is the the uh, the finest grain set is a type of um, event like H1, H2 is the finest grain event. Sorry, finest grain event in this sample 